There was a new serial spokeswoman in town this spooky season, and in my supremely humble opinion, that Matrix-tinted monster high reject is just not cutting it. But you know what would do a better job? For starters, nobody cranks out cartoony ghouls quite like indie horror games do. And we've got plenty of ideas for how to improve this mascot. Just you wait and see. Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley, it's the Harry Gold Show. With your host, Harry Gold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. Not long ago, a commenter by the name of Kairu Huckabee informed me that General Mills, breakfast brokers responsible for Lucky the Leprechaun, the Trix Rabbit, and whatever you call this thing, have come out with a timely new addition to its line of monster-themed cereals. More timely than this video, anyway. A zillennial zombie by the name of Carmella Creeper. And that's kind of a big deal. After all, Toucan Sam was created in 1963, Tony the Tiger back in 52. The average age for an active cereal mascot is practically congressional at nearly 60. Have we considered giving cereal brands term limits? But the point is, new ones don't come along that often. And now, America's second favorite General M, that's after General Motors, but still beating out General Mad Dog Mattis, has finally broken the drought, or fast as it were. And the world has met her with a resounding, and I'll be honest, I'm surprised it's even that positive. Even aside from looking like a cheaply animated Flash cartoon about a malformed Bratz doll, Carmella is a baffling mismatch for the rest of the lineup. Like how she's a DJ, for some reason? Even though none of the other characters have a side hustle or ruin other people's music for a living. But that's what you kids think is cool, right? DJs? What with your misspelled marshmallows and dead mice. That means we're cool, right? We're cool. Please think we're cool. They're obviously desperate for Zoomers to love it, but in classic corporate fashion, it's taken them until 2023 to figure out what teens were wearing circa Obama's first term. Nothing says hip with today's youth quite like perusing Hot Topic with an iPod full of My Chemical Romance. Ironically, Carmella probably would be less dated if she had debuted with the rest of the gang back in 1971. Though the Count dons a Trevor Scott style exclusively brown wardrobe, his attire is otherwise stereotypically vampiric. In fact, none of them felt compelled to bash consumers over the head with trends of the era. Why, there's nary a disco dancer or dirty tofu-sucking hippie in sight. Rather than that living tombstone meets Sid from Toy Story t-shirt with sludge green fishnets, I imagine a 70s version might sport a torn up dress with sleeves that actually function. But to maintain the Irish flag colour palette and limply edgy skull motif, in place of those dopey headphones, she might wear orange earrings instead. And just because General Mills was so meticulously thorough about getting everything wrong, I'm also gonna nitpick the name. The other mascots are either a monster merged with a flavor like Count Chocula and Frankenberry, or just rhyming and alliteration like Fruit Brute and Boo Berry. Carmella Creeper is double dipping. Following the pattern, it should be Caramel Creeper. But the living dead are probably not the green thing that this is most likely to elicit in your intended audience. Either that, or it'll make people think of sleazebags and prowlers, and I'm not sure which is the less desirable connotation. Caramel Cadaver would certainly be more on theme, though if for some reason rotting human carcasses are not what you want people to associate with your cereal, Caramel Creature might make for a better catch-all monster moniker. That said, a zombie wouldn't have been my first pick anyhow. There are lots more iconic horror creatures that General Mills could have gone with. For instance, Fruity Yummy Mummy is an officially named hanger-on from the 80s who was never intended to be part of the monster cereals gang anyway. So I'd be perfectly happy to leave him in the waste paper basket and bring in a new female mummy instead. Clowns are another modern horror mainstay that not only make for easy alliteration, but also an easy win with the online crowd. The internet loves a clown girl. Probably too much, as a matter of fact. Otherwise, there's no shortage of green ghoulies in the horror pantheon. A Wicked Witch would have been an appropriate choice, as would The Bride of Frankenstein, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, the works of H.P. Lovecraft, even Little Green Men from Outer Space, all would have suited perfectly. But then again, the whole point of this exercise was to pander to dead-eyed, disengaged kids with no attachment to all this stuff that happened before Roblox existed, right? So maybe we need a different approach. 
The thing is, Mascot Horror is already hot property with the Sprog demo, so why not save ourselves some trouble and just license an indie horror game character? There's no way the Whippersnappers could turn down a big old box of Freddy Fazberry. What about a satisfyingly crunchy bowl of Honey Wuggy? And they'll definitely love a heaping helping of Garten of Ban Banana. And there's plenty more horror mascots where they came from. In fact, there's even a horror mascot who's already a serial mascot, from the game Fred Serial Company. I saw Matt Pat from Game Theory playing it a while back, and it bothered me then for much the same reason as Miss Creeper does now. The thing about serial mascots in the present year is they're kind of an anachronism. Like I said before, most of them are more than half a century old. From back when Velma was straight, Nick Fury had hair, cigarettes were healthy, and sugar was a selling point. In those days, cartoon mascots were peak fashion. But at the same time, these guys are like a consumerist ship of Theseus. What you're seeing on the average cereal box is a current version of a 2010s version of a 2000s version, iterating all the way back to when America's trendiest leisure activity was blacklisting communists. As a result, your stereotypical cereal mascot looks like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon filtered through 90s Disney and lacquered with a shiny coat of 2023. This half-century sausage machine inevitably churns out designs quite distinct from what otherwise makes for a modern cartoon. Hence why even serial mascots drawn today don't just look like Rick and Morty, Fiona and Cake, or worse. The designs from Fred's Cereal Company, on the other hand, don't bear the slightest resemblance to any real serial mascot I've ever seen. Especially not any that are decades old, as per Fred's obligatory mascot horror lore. That's L-O-R-E, I know the accent, it's... In fact, those vacant, bulging eyes and Ardman lips with too many teeth look a lot more like something you'd see in a 21st century indie video game. Now how's that for a coincidence? But I'm not here to redesign Fred's cereal company, it's General Mills that needs my help. And help them I shall. So if oversized plush toys possessed by the souls of murdered children isn't quite what you want your brand connected with, the kids are into plenty of other unnerving things. True crime podcasts and documentaries are the beloved hobby of mildly demented women everywhere, and I think their subjects would make perfect additions to the General Mills family. After all, they're already serial killers. <laughs> yes, I did make this whole video entirely so I could make that one joke. Count Chocula and his creepy comrades weren't the only spate of monsters to come crawling out of the 70s. But why limit ourselves to just one kind of unthinkable evil? War crimes are a true kind of crime too, you know. Now some of you may be thinking, isn't this all a bit tasteless? To which I would say, well, if you tried the cereal, I'd call it a perfect match. Er, er, er. Jokes aside, we're pitching this to all the under 30s, generations that laugh at Twin Towers memes and cry if their dog dies in Minecraft. They're still working on figuring out the whole empathy thing, so we've got plenty of time to sell units before they realize this is actually quite heinous. In that case, maybe associating one's brand with actual deranged psychopaths isn't the greatest PR move. We'll leave that to Patreon, and whoever thought this was a good idea for a new logo. But hey, there are plenty of other weird and disturbing things out there on the internet that the young folks are into, and I'm not just talking about the hot goss on Will Smith's relationship. I've seen the squares freaking out about Skibbity Toilet for some reason. I mean, it's weird, sure, but... It's not Jada Pinkett Smith weird. The ever-persistent ghost of the Blair Witch Project continues its haunting of the popular culture in the form of the found footage VHS nonsense which has plagued the internet for a number of years now. And of course, adjacent to all that are all your internet age cryptids, like our lanky buddy the Slenderman. And there's plenty more frightening mimetic ghoulies prowling the World Wide Web. You know, like Jada Pinkett Smith. And those are all the design ideas we have time for today. So if we're looking for a truly frightening mascot, I think the best choice is pretty clear. Because you know what scares me? The fact that someone thought this was a good idea. Spooky, scary, cereal. Your green mascot's a chick. This story feels familiar, someone called Tucker Quick. Cause spooky scary cereal fills arteries with black. Your newfound inclusivity won't prevent heart attacks. We're so sorry cereal, you're just misunderstood. I'd like to love your new design, but it's not very good. So spooky scary cereal, it's time to redesign. 
I know a better one than yours, coincidentally mine. Let's play a game. I'll draw someone famous, and three people that guess who it is in the comments will get a shout-out in the next episode. If your guess for the caricature last time was classic horror actor Vincent Price, you are absolutely correct. Vincent's rule on the Wheel of Winners is... The first three people to say they're not sure, or admit they copied someone else's answer. When the chips were down, the Potato Lord came out on top. Big Salmon did just swimmingly, landing second, and Aaron Langheim chose to err on the side of caution, putting them in third. Well done everyone, thanks for playing. The forehead warmers on this week's subject are so heavy they can only take an elevator one at a time. And that's one way to raise an eyebrow. Their cheekbones are so high that in many countries federal law would require them to install a fire escape on their face. And their chin is so long it could be mistaken for a modern Scorsese movie. Now who could this be? If you know who that was, let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, jump scare the heck out of that subscribe button. But this has been the Harry Gold Show. So until next time, stay safe, and God bless.